In my last video, I told you all about stumperies, showed you lots of examples, and explained how I picked this spot for my new stumpery. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the whole process of building a stumpery from start to finish. First thing I do is evaluate the site and see what do I have to do to get ready. It's going to be much easier to build this with all of this stuff out of the way. So step one is to clear things out. I have a little beech tree here and it's starting to lean really heavily that way. Right now I'm facing north. Behind me is lots of trees. So there's very little sun that gets in here. So all of these poor little trees, they just lean out there trying to get some sun. This is never going to be a very good tree. So I think I'll probably take it out. I have another larger beech on my left here and it's doing the same thing. It's leaning way, way out and the top branches are getting very close to the house. So I think I'm gonna take this out too. I haven't quite decided yet whether I'll keep a tall stump or a lower stump, but I wanna keep the stump. I wanna make it part of this design. Then I'm gonna take all of the logs that are in here and get them out of here. I wanna have a clean slate here so I can see what I'm doing. I'm also gonna remove a couple larger plants there. There's no point in you watching me do that. So I'll get all this done and I'll come back in an hour. I've got all the logs moved out of here. I've raked all the leaves away. Now I can see the soil that I'm really working with. And I'm a little surprised. I thought this hill was gonna have a lot more soil right where I'm standing, but it actually comes down and it's a bit of a gully here. Once I put all the logs in, I'm gonna to have to fill the spaces between the logs with soil. And I don't really wanna bring in a lot of soil here. I'm hoping to use the soil that I've got. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come back here where there's a fair amount of soil and dig some of this out to move it down the hill so I have a little extra. The other thing you can do is if you don't wanna bring soil in, you take your pieces of wood and sink them down a bit. Wherever you do that, you'll be digging out soil and now you'll have more soil to fill in the spaces. So I'll spend a bit of time moving some soil around and getting the base really ready. This is a great piece of wood for my stumpery, but it's too big for me to carry and move around the garden. So what I did was I made one of these stone sleds and I have a video to show you exactly how to make this. It takes about a half hour and once it's made, you can move big logs and big rocks and move them all over your property without too much trouble. This is part of the trunk of a very large beach that had a trunk on it like this. It fell over in the winter time, broke off at this end this end I sawed off to get it into a reasonable size. I couldn't move the trunk like this, so I actually split it down the middle into two pieces. So I've got another one of these to bring up. I'll hide this end, face it away from the audience. They'll see this end, but I see this piece going in near the front here, kind of heading up the hill. It'll look as if the tree had fallen down and this is sitting on the ground. The second one I'll bring in and I'm gonna use it higher up to help retain some of that soil on the hill. This is gonna be a great addition to the stumpery. Before you start using some of these pieces of wood, take the time and really have a look at them and decide which way you want to use them. I just love this piece. This part is sawn off, so I don't really wanna show this part, but I love this front piece. It's got a nice knot here where a branch used to be. Got a nice side branch, so you've got this V-shaped here. The other thing I like about this is it's cut flat on the bottom. So if I just sit this on soil, it's going to look as if there's a big trunk under the soil. Whenever you can get a stump like that, it's great. It means it doesn't have to be as large to look as if it's a really large piece. Once this is sitting on the ground, people will think most of it is underground, and yet I only have to move this piece which is heavy enough for me. I can move it and roll it, but I certainly can't lift this piece. So this is gonna be the star of my show. And this is the front because I really like this look here. So at first glance, a piece of wood like this doesn't look like anything special, but it's actually kind of interesting. First of all, you've got the main trunk here with a nice side branch that always adds interest. But this side branch is rotted out. So there's a hole going right through this out the bottom. So what I can do with this one is put this flat like this, 
fill this with soil and then plant something in here. Now I got a little fern growing out that's about this big. That would look really nice. It is important that you look at each piece and decide which is the front. How do you want to position this and which side should face the audience, the visitors to your garden? And again, this is cut flat, so I'll probably tilt it a little, maybe like this. Later on in the video, I'm going to show you a little trick to make this top even more interesting. This is another piece I brought from out back, and I can use this piece in a number of different ways. I could just leave it the way it is, sink it a bit in the soil maybe, and then fill this with soil. That way I kind of have a container sitting over there with something growing out of the middle of it, but you would still see a lot of the wood part. Now if I turn this piece up right, it's got a pretty nice front on it. It's got this jagged edge here, which looks very natural. It has been cut here, but I don't think you're going to see much of this. If I go and tilt it a bit, you're going to see this surface even less. Now it looks like a very natural piece of wood without any man-made cuts. But I could also position it like this. Now instead of seeing a trunk, you're seeing the inside, which has rotted out. And this is really nice too. And you could imagine some plant growing in here. Maybe a vine even that comes up and grows over the top of it. I actually kind of like that. So I think this would be one of my vertical pieces in the garden. I have a few pieces in now. This piece here is a regular tree trunk and it's just cut off. And so it looks very man-made. But it turns out that the cuts are made in a certain angle. This one is made this way. And this one is made this way. So if I lay it like this, you don't actually see the cuts because they're angled like this. If we have a look at this piece, it's very similar to that, but now the cuts are this way and this way so that they're narrow here and wider here. If I leave this like this, you're gonna see the ends easier. On the other hand, if I flip it over, then it'll sit like this one and you'll see the cuts a lot less. And as it turns out, you see the cuts less, but this is also much more prominent. So it actually looks much better like this. One of the things you find when you're doing this kind of a project is it's a good idea to try the logs in different positions and see which one looks the best. Here's a nice little trick. If you don't have a lot of large pieces of wood, don't worry, use smaller pieces. Lay them together so that they're overlapping. The ones I'm showing you here are each about a foot long. If you go for a hike in the forest, it's pretty easy to find this kind of wood, and they're pretty easy to carry out. These are old pieces and are quite light. This is a pretty standard stump, but I want to make it a little more interesting. So using a chainsaw, I cut a hole into it, and this hole goes right through the stump. When I set it upright and fill this hole with soil, I've got a little planter. The plant will cover the cut end and make the whole thing look a little more natural. Try to find a plant that's a little larger and that will drape over the sides of the stump. I showed you this stump earlier. The side branch has rotted out, and so there's a hole right through to the bottom. I'll put another plant into this one. As you lay the pieces of wood, fill in the spaces between them with a bit of soil. Try to use different amounts of soil so that some areas become higher and others become lower. Then when it's time to plant, you'll be able to put different sizes of plants into each area, giving you a lot of variation in the garden. I was lucky enough to find this log. It has a nice covering of moss already, but the moss is stuck mostly on the bark and I think this log is getting so old that the bark will probably fall off soon. But at least it gives the garden a start. My plan is to cover most of these logs with moss. That's going to take a little while for it all to grow. And I've decided to make a separate video to show you how to add moss to logs and rocks. In that video, I'm going to do a little experiment and try out three different common ways to add moss. One method uses glue. 
The second one uses string to tie the moss onto the log. And the third one will be a smoothie of yogurt and moss, and I'll paint it on and see how well that grows. At this stage in the project, I've laid down several pieces of wood, and you'll notice that I've started at the back and I'm working towards the front. This means I don't have a lot of logs and wood in my way as I try to place new pieces. Well, phase one of the stompery is done. I've placed all the wood where I want it to be, and I've filled in the spaces with soil. I haven't started planting yet, and I'm not going to show you the actual planting process in this video. It's really early spring here, and if I plant things, you're not going to see much anyways because most perennials aren't even above ground yet. So that wouldn't be very exciting for you. So here's the reveal of my new stumpery. I hope you enjoyed this video.